What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Infiniti Q50 Red Sport, courtesy of Faulkner Infiniti in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because quite honestly, this is a good looking sedan. This is the kind of car that I am personally into. And what's even cooler, if you're into JDM, this car is actually known as the Nissan on Skyline still to this day in Japan and that's so much cooler of a name if you ask me but anyways this one will be competing with other cars like the Audi A5 Sportback, Genesis G70 and BMW 3 Series just to name a few so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the Q50 Red Sport rear wheel drive configuration starts at $56,500. Then you got the all wheel drive starting at $58,500. But regardless of the configuration that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Red Sport is a three liter twin turbo V6, putting out 400 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 350 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,600 RPM. Again, power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a seven speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know of course we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time 4.5 seconds well done infinity top speed 153 miles per hour also impressive there mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 26 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so i did want to also mention the warranty i don't always mention warranty in my reviews but infinity actually has an above average warranty so i'm going to mention it as far as the bumper to bumper warranty goes it comes in at four years 60,000 miles that's nice and a six-year 70,000 mile powertrain warranty so it's not America's best warranty but it is above average so that is pretty sticking cool but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Q50 Red Sport I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a little toggle switch looking thing located just behind the shifter drive modes will include standard eco snow sport sport plus and personal a lot of them there adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity and the VDC adjustments then as well. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so before we do this, there is a full manual shift mode. I'm just gonna slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. Also have it in Sport Plus driving mode. It is telling me what gear I'm in up on the digital portion of the gauges here. And we are all set in three, two, one. Go! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, baby! Dang! This thing is quick. One, paddle shifters, also equally impressive. That was a very quick reaction time there, man. That was fun! I love it! And it holds the gear, too, so it is a true full manual shift mode. So, uh, unlike most other uh, vehicles with paddle shifters, it just automatically shifts for you if you don't do the work, so... I love that, man. You can feel it in the pit of your stomach. But having said that, I didn't really go all out there. That wasn't anything too crazy because I wanted to save that for the acceleration test. So let's go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let's really put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get the Q50 Red Sport, AKA Nissan Skyline here, up to speed. All right, yet again, we found our straightaway in three, two, one, go. <laughs> This thing is stupid quick <laughs> in the best possible way. There wasn't really any turbo lag either. That's the other cool thing about this. A lot of times with turbocharged engines and twin turbocharged engines, you get a little bit of delay at the initial get up and go, but it didn't exist here. This is just a dang quick car. So well deserving of the Nissan Skyline name infinity. I know you don't have to call it a Nissan, that's fine. Call it the Infinity Skyline. I guarantee you, you probably would double sales if you kept that awesome Skyline name and called it the Infinity Skyline. That's all I'm saying. And for the Red Sport, call it the Nismo. I don't know, just something better than a, a Q50. That sounds too close to the QX50. So it makes it sound like an SUV almost. It doesn't make it sound as exciting as this vehicle actually is. Call it the Skyline. 
that's all I'm saying. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 14 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.8 inch ventilated rear discs. Also four piston front calipers, by the way, finished in red. Yes, you get red brake calipers. That is pretty darn cool. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it will blow your mind. 105 feet, that is an insane number for a sedan. Usually you find that number in coupes, in sports cars. So 105 feet, usually I say anything in the one teens for a sports sedan. Then what does that make this? Because 105 feet like braking feel, instantly brings you to a stop. And you hear that downshift because I still got it in sport driving mode. Let me kill this sport driving mode here, put it back to normal. But yeah, braking feels wonderful as well. The driving dynamics overall, Again, incredible. So, Infinity slash Nissan, you're crushing it. Anyways, and touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, but an adaptive damping suspension also comes standard. This thing keeps getting better. You guys know I love that suspension because it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, and you can tell the difference if you've driven both. Let me tell you guys but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling so it's giving you the best of both worlds and otherwise if it wouldn't even have it so you gotta love that as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today having said that it's not s class worthy or anything like that but it'll definitely get the job done i don't have any issues as far as that steering feel goes i got it in sport drive or i got it in regular driving mode let me actually switch that up real quick i wish it was heavier that's just my personal opinion. I think uh, Infinity can make a little heavier of a steering feel, especially in that Sport or Sport Plus driving mode. And um, yeah, that would definitely make this thing a little bit more playful to go along with that acceleration and braking power on the Q50. So anywho, that's just my personal take. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 40 miles per hour right now. I'll let you guys be the judge. I'm perfectly fine with it. I got a road mic here, so I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Touching our rear visibility, because of the shape of the sedan, you're definitely not gonna have any issues there. I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror, but did wanna also mention to you guys, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the Q50 Red Sport as well. Meaning whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about. So you gotta love that as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Infiniti Q50 Red Sport. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Infiniti Q50 Red Sport finished in majestic white. That is a pretty cool sounding exterior color name if you ask me, but as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Doing it right, Infinity. If you take a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the Q50 Red Sport is built and assembled in Japan, as it should be. But starting up front, gloss black front grille does come standard. You got full LED headlights, meaning both low beam and high beam to the sides there. With LED daytime running lights, you get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. LED fog lights down to the bottom corners there. They definitely look good as well. And you kind of got this like gloss black accents found in the bottom corners as well. So I definitely like that. Another little uh, added option that we have on this one here today is we do have some kind of backlit LED lighting surrounding that Infinity logo. I think it's like four to 600 bucks. I don't really know, but I think it looks dang good. It's gonna look even better at night though, because it's daytime right now. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, gloss black window surrounds do come standard. Also, gloss black power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Also gonna find some chrome accents on the door handles there and then taking a look down at the wheel setup. They will be 19 inch aluminum alloys with run flats believe it or not. So that's pretty darn cool, actually. You're gonna get performance tires for the rear wheel drive or performance run flats. And then the all wheel drive is gonna give you all season run flats. So by the way, we do have the all wheel drive in case anybody is curious about that. But anywho, I do like those red brake calipers. They look good behind those wheels too, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, a little shark fin antenna, I like it though. Uh, no rear spoiler in this particular configuration. You do have LED tail 
taillights. I think they look dang good back there. You got the all-wheel drive badging to go along with all that. You're going to get a body-colored rear diffuser all the way down there to the bottom, but I think my favorite part, check out these exhaust outlets. They look just so dang cool. They're almost like they're perforated. They look so dang good, my personal opinion, but dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Someone else, since we are around to the back of the Q50 here, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There is, however, also a button on the trunk itself, of course, as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Uh, there is some uh, kind of hooks for a cargo net back there. I saw that. Of course, you got cargo lighting. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, it looks like you got some tools to probably uh, switch out a tire, although they are run flat, so I'm not sure if you would technically need to, but they're there for you nonetheless. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 35.1 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. You got rear ventilation coming standard as well and dual rear USB charging port. So you got to love that too. But then making our way up to the front seats, 12-way power driver seat with power lumbar coming standard. Leather seating does come standard. You got the quilted leather going on with the, uh, the quilted stitching. I think that looks pretty darn good. But heated front seats as well. Got memory settings for up to two different drivers to go along with all that. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. Wouldn't have minded a little more enhanced bolstering to kind of go along with what this vehicle is. But other than that, it's perfectly fine. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and it is actually heated as well. No issues there. Then making our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Infinity logo all the way to the top. Lock, unlock the button to pop the trunk there. But the circular button, that is going to be your remote start. that does come standard. And of course, a keyless entry with a push button start also comes standard. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauges. And so speaking of those gauges, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a digital screen front and center to control what is on that screen. There are some steering wheel mounted controls. It actually also gives you when your oil change, your next oil changes do. So I love that. So it's uh, uh, 10,000 miles basically. So it's gotta be a synthetic oil in this thing, it sounds like. Uh, you got your outside temperature, you got your time of the day, trip A, trip B, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. I also love that one as well. Average fuel economy, the list goes on. Pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital gauges. And actually, although this isn't a full digital gauge cluster, I actually like the design to this. It doesn't look that bad, so I don't have any issues there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. You're going to find a power moonroof coming standard. I love that. Overhead sunglass holder, also love that as well. You do have homelink controls for up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror. That looks pretty darn good. You got a little bit of storage just in front of the shifter. You also have that 12 volt power outlet just behind the shifter. You got this. Uh, carbon fiber trim it actually looks real i think that's real carbon fiber too got a couple cup holders there within the center armrest there's a decent amount of storage there you got 12 volt power outlet aux port usb a usb c so good bit in there as well but that carbon fiber trim by the way that continues onto the doors it's also found just around the infotainment screens and yes there are two infotainment screens so i'll get to that in a second but overall interior quality is actually done pretty darn good i like the red contrast stitching throughout i like the uh kind of diagonal seams found in the doors here. That looks pretty darn good. You got gloss black trim surrounding the shifter, another gloss silver trim, and then the carbon fiber trim. So overall, everything looks pretty darn good to me. I don't have any issues there, but now let's go ahead and take a look at those screens because there's essentially one infotainment screen and then the bottom screen is just gonna be like your information and climate control and stuff like that. So we're gonna focus on that upper screen. It is an eight inch color touchscreen display. You get Bluetooth and audio streaming, wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Also factory navigation system does come standard, but on the bottom screen is actually where you check out your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system, 
system. There is one of them. It is a 16 speaker Bose sound system. That is a ton of speakers and Bose is a reputable company. So I think you know what we have to do next guys. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, that's plenty fine sound system, plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. 16 speakers in a vehicle the size of the Q50 is definitely overkill. That's definitely a good thing. And Bose is a very reputable company. I had that in my Infiniti G35 coupe back in the day. I think it was an 04. But yeah, that was a really, really good sound system. And of course the sound system never failed me, so nothing wrong with that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the Q50 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera along with a surround view monitor there to the right, giving you that bird's eye view. Having said that, not the highest quality rear view camera, but it'll still get the job done, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Brake assist, blind spot warning, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, and front and rear parking sensors then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Infiniti Q50 Red Sport, this thing looks dang good. Like it was hard for me not to find a good photo of this thing. So. Plenty good looking, plenty quick as well, like really, really quick. Excellent braking to go along with that quickness, so that's equally important, of course. As far as we're in for improvement, guys, I'll give you two things. One, the interior is a little outdated and the tech is a little bit it's not easiest to use maybe because it's the dual screen setup so looking at the navigation screen and then all of a sudden you gotta switch it up and look at the radio screen and i don't know it would be better if it was just all one like literally every single other vehicle out there then the other thing is if infinity changed this one thing i bet you they would sell so much more of this car even if they didn't change anything else and that's the name look acura already changed their ilx to the integra bringing back a legendary name why not bring back the skyline name here to the u.s not bring back i don't think it was ever in the u.s but still that is a legendary name call this the infinity skyline then swap out the red sport for nismo or even better yet here's another option for you infinity make that a package option doesn't have to be standard keep everything the way it is but then make it a package option where you can completely rebadge this Infiniti Q50 to make it a Nissan Skyline Nismo or something like that, Nissan Skyline whatever, that includes the steering wheel, the front and rear badging, everything, just make it all Nissan Skyline. And I think a lot of JDM enthusiasts would actually buy this car just for that particular reason. So anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Let me know what you think of the Infiniti Q50 Red Sport in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all for 10 years now. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay